All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up. We are in Mark chapter 8, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Mark chapter 8. For you Bible students, you know there are four Gospels, four Gospels. There are 66 books in the Bible. This book, the Bible, is written by 40 different authors, different continents, different time frames. Some of these books of the Bible are literally thousands of years apart. But interestingly enough, one real author, that is the Holy Spirit, God himself, writing this book. That's why it's one concise thought. And here in Mark chapter 8, verse 22 through 26, we're going to see the 25th miracle of Jesus. And we're looking at them in order through the gospel. So they're not, you know, right in Matthew or right in Mark or right in Luke or right in John. Each one a little bit different perspective. The Holy Spirit so wise, penning his word through human vessels so we could understand it. And here in Mark chapter 8, we pick it up, verse 22, and we're going to see another miracle of healing the blind. This is the, 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 the main miracle that Jesus does, and he does so many. But if there was a miracle Jesus did more than others, it was the healing of the blind. And I want to ask you today, what do you see? What do you see? Are you able to see? Maybe you can see, but you see fuzzy, or you're seeing things that God's word says, that's not what you're supposed to see. That's that's not what you're supposed to be using those eyes to look at or to perceive with. You know, just like someone may need glasses or contact lenses to correct their vision, listen, there's times where we can see, but we can't see as clearly as the Lord would want us to. And I want to tell you today, if that's the case, Jesus wants to heal you. Are you ready to be healed by Jesus? Are you ready to see things the way he sees things? And we're going to see that here, Mark chapter 8, verse 22. It says, then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him. You got to love how people who could see brought blind people to Jesus. You want to know what evangelism is or witnessing or sharing the gospel or winning a soul, as the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. What it is, in essence, is people who can now see bring blind people who can't see to Jesus to be touched by him. That's the job, man. That's it. And he came and and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So now we bring a blind person to Jesus and then we cry out to Jesus. We beg Jesus to touch him. To, to heal him. We recognize only Jesus can do that. One of my favorite sayings is, listen, we can bring Christ to men. We can bring Christ to men, but we can't bring men to Christ. We can't open a blind man's eyes. We can tell him about Jesus. We can bring him to Jesus, but we can't open his eyes. And it's so true. So he took the blind man by the hand and he led him out of the town. You got to love how Jesus does things different. He didn't say, I'm going to do it right here. He takes him by the hand. He leads him out of town. And when he had spit on his eyes, once again, one of those miracles that Jesus might be doing in your life right now. He might be doing something to heal you, but it doesn't feel too good. It's a little awkward. Maybe it makes you feel somewhat uncomfortable, but God is working, and that's what matters. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and he said, well, I I see men like trees walking. Listen, I think many believers let Jesus get this far with them. They get the initial touch, the initial, you know, the initial Jesus spit in the eyes. We see a little clearer than we used to, but we still don't see men the way we're supposed to. You know, we're saved by grace through faith, but we don't allow the sanctification process to play out in such a way where our heart changes for men and women around us, for the people around us. And we don't see them the way Jesus wants us to see them. You know, we're screaming, we're yelling, we're cursing still. You know, if you're a child of God and there's foul filth coming out of your mouth, listen, I love you. But let Jesus have access to your heart. Let him finish the work. Jesus said, listen, out of the overflow of the the heart, the mouth speaks. If out of the mouth is coming these things, something, something still needs to be rinsed out in the heart. And that's what he's after. He's not going, oh, my kid still says those words I don't like. Though he doesn't. 
That's not the point. The real heart of the father is he's saying, my kid's still not giving me access to that part of his or her heart. And I want to heal him. I want to cleanse him. So out of the mouth can overflow the, the heart that I want to, to flow from there. And for this man, he sees, but he says, I see men like trees walking, you know, kind of weird. Doesn't see him fully. Doesn't see the man as a creature made by God. Doesn't see him with the fingerprints of God on him. You know, as far gone or as angry or as, you know, uh, decrepit as someone might be, they still have the fingerprints of God on them. And that alone should cause you and I, cause you and I to still be praying for them, loving them, being patient with them. You know, as Paul says to the Romans, as much as it depends on us, be at peace with other men. And that's what, that's, that should be our response. And, and this man says, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then Jesus sent him away to his house, saying, saying, neither go into the town nor tell anyone in the town what you've seen. Listen, maybe you've been touched by Jesus. You even see, you're not fully blind, but you're, you're not seeing as clearly as the Lord would want you to see. Listen, in order to be healed, you have to humble yourself. It's that simple. If you're going, no, no, I see perfect, but you know, you're still bumping into poles and tripping over your shoelaces and running over people with your car and seeing men like trees, right? Not as God's creations, not as pre-sons and daughters of God, not as pre-Christians, but as, ah, oh, they're dumb rock. It's a dumb piece of wood over there. Listen, the Lord wants to touch you again. Seek him, cry out to him. Let him. I know you say, but he spit in my eyes once. I don't want him to spit in my eyes again. Listen, after he spits in the eye one, he don't have to do it again. He just touches it this time. Let him touch you. Maybe even today, as we finish up this devotion in prayer, ask him, Lord, I see, but I'm not seeing as clearly as I should. Won't you heal me? Would you join me in prayer? Father, I do pray. Lord, for everybody listening, that Lord, we would see the way you want us to see. Lord, you've saved us, and we're so grateful for that. But, Lord, there's still so much work left to do inside of us. So that good work you've begun, we pray, Lord, finish it. Touch us, change us, clean up the way we see, clean up the way we talk. And, God, we just ask you today to do this by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.